Hey Juan, how are you, man? Zoom go. There we go. Great. Good to see you on here, Mark, Peter, Trevor. It's an interesting thing putting these webinars on each week, guys. Uh, when you have multiple monitors and you're trying to uh, go back and forth, there's like a chat box that's in one place. If you don't see it in another, questions and answers are in one. We'll give it like another minute and then we'll get rocking and rolling. Let me share. Uh, there we go. So what's our rate? But how many people got chopped up today? If you were trying uh, trying to play the Fed's announcement. Yeah, let me uh, let me share something with you. Let me log out. Do, 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 do. Let me log out of this one. Yeah, let me save it. Hold on. Sign in. Let me get this chart pulled up and I'll share it with you guys. Not that one. Nope, here we go. Sorry, you guys can't see it on my end. I just want to share something. That's not it. Come on. Maybe it's on my W5T layout. There it is. Okay, let's share this. Desktop. All right, can everybody see my chart? Fine on here. Yeah, everybody, if you can uh, click, your, if you're going to write a message down below, click all panelists and attendees, and then uh, that way it'll show up. I think. Uh, think that that can be set as a default that's on there, but yes. Okay, let me show you all something um, from, let's go to, all right, daily. And let me take off, let me just make this chart bigger. Well, it might help if I was on the right symbol that could probably, if I open the right one. Okay, now we go. All right, if you guys remember last week, uh, I can't comment on numbers, Trevor. It's against FTC or FCC or FEC or whatever the hell it is that's on there that, uh, I'm not allowed to post uh, profits 
Yes. That uh, I'm not allowed to say a number anymore. I can say ticks, uh, if I recall right. But anyhow, go back to it, uh, of framing your chart of whatever symbol that you're on. The first thing that we did is we draw a channel on the daily time frame. Okay. Now, I took it from the pivot low down here, high, low, close, divided by three. It automatically drops it on trading view where it needs to be. Now, look at, let's zoom in here, look at where we are at. All right. And then on a daily, now drop down to a four hour, and we are, the red channel is a four hour, and the white lines are a daily. That way it's easy for me visually, no matter what time frame I'm on, I know if we're in the big picture time frame. You always hear everybody talk about trading off uh, higher time frames. You are trading off a higher time frame when you use a daily and a 240 and a 60 minute channel. You're just finding um, opportunities in there on the lower time frames uh, to catch that move when it reverses. Now, if you look on here, uh, on June 2nd, and let me see here, John's, John Garland and I, on June 2nd, we drew this supply zone right here. And I said, John puts it on there. He says, JW says on June 9th at 2 p.m. Central Time that we're going to drop. This was on the second, which was over in here, in this area. Look how freaking close uh, that I was on this. And how I came up with that number was I was on a 240. All I did was scroll sideways. And I kind of just eyeballed this 240 uh, area. This little yellow dotted line was just an eyeball point of control. And let's see here. Hold on. We still got you. Yeah. I thought it said I lost y'all. I was like, uh-oh. Uh, so I put, I just dropped this here and I even put in there 240 uh, point of control eyeball supply zone. And then I added, I believe this was a daily. Yeah. I put this as my daily uh, point of control was the top one. And then John gave me this zone from here to here, the blue. Look where we came on this on a, a daily. We came up and touched it almost to the tick. It actually went past it like a couple ticks, but still did very, very well. We guessed that. And I'll tell you how I came across, how, let me shut this off over here. Where I came up with that is where the 240 channel we were uh, going to intersect with that um, point of control. I dropped it across and that point of control came across this 240 channel. Now keep in mind, we were down over here somewhere. Uh, or let's see, let's go down to four hours, sorry. So I was, John and I were like right here when I made that prediction and how I came up with that was that point of control line from going backwards on a 240 came across this. We've been in a nice 240 channel for a long time. It's been respecting it very, very, very well. Like we haven't really popped out of it at all, just the normal wicks um, going out of there. So what I did is I take my mouse and I go across over here at the bottom and I just go, where did these things line up at? and they line up right there. So that's where I came up, six, eight, six, nine. Um, I said six, nine at two o'clock. Came very, very close, very, very close. Um, but now we're coming down, but we're also at the center channel line for this daily. So that could be support to go back up. If this next candle, uh, 240 candle opens and goes below here, then we should keep on going down uh, to that bottom channel line. 
hopefully. Um, I have drawn a new channel. Uh, I did a 15 minute one on this trend down and we've already busted out of it. Let's see here. It's kind of hard to see on the purple. Yeah, we've already busted out of it and we're at the bottom of that 240. So anywho, let's, let's go back to, let me log into the other account real quick. All right. What symbol do you guys want me to look at tonight? We always do ES, but let's do something different so we can grade it. That let's throw me out a symbol besides the ES. And I know my camera doesn't look right because my camera is on this monitor, but I have the questions on this side. JPM. Uh, does he have JP on here? Is that J2PM, Trevor? Or USD JPY? Is that a stock? JPM, there you go. All right. There you go, JP Morgan. I figured that's what it was. Um, all right, so let's go over here to JPM. So we've gone down here. We're going to go to daily and let me turn off bits, roller coaster, Elliott wave. Maybe we're going to turn off the volume just so we can see. So on a daily, we've got four candles down. We've got a channel. Let's do regression channel. Daily. I really should go from here. That's pretty close. Pretty darn close for that channel on it. But let's go over here. On your right hand side of your screen, guys, this little uh, looks like a stack of books. You can click that up. Anything that you draw on this chart is over there. So see this regression channel? I, can, I don't have to delete it. I can just turn it on or off. Um, that's on there. And you can even right click, rename, and I can put daily channel and today's date, 06, what is it, 10, 20. And then that way you know when you go back over here on the side, like a lot of times if you're putting in um, say Paul's uh, support and resistance zones from the 5k club you can go in here and name them I did um, I sent the email off again to uh, for some questions to uh, trading view um, on a, I think it was 14 different um, things that I would like to see different uh, one of these things is dot D, an actual dot D chart like this for futures um, and then one of the things was being able to do our 5K club support and resistance zone, Paul sticky support and resistance zones, where I can draw them on Sunday when Paul sends them out. And then anybody on TradingView, we can just email them to you. And you can just import them into your uh, TradingView and you don't have to mess around. Uh, you basically, you would save them over here in a file. It would just be... Paul's support and resistance zones with the date. You get the new file, you add them, and then just delete the old one and they would go away. It'd save everybody a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Yes. So Trevor, so we draw the channel on here. This is a daily channel. Now I want to see.
from because we kind of have gone sideways and just popped out a little bit. So I'm gonna want to do one from here to here. All right. I like this channel. Um, I like this channel a lot on this JP Morgan one because we've stayed inside of it quite a bit. We only went one candle out and then come back in. And we're at the bottom of this channel right here. So I wanna see the next candle open up outside of that and go down uh, from there. Now it is a slight uptrend that's on there. Uh, let's go down to four hour. For our chart, even on there, the daily is uh, still keeping it pretty darn good. Let's go down to one hour. All right, on a one hour chart, look at the opportunities inside. Now we still have this daily channel, but we're down to a one hour. Now let's turn on roller coaster and look at Why down, why down and out on the channel? Um, if we go back to, let me turn off roller coaster so you can see this. Uh, Trevor, if you haven't read the book, Price Action Breakdown by Dimitri Lemire, um, you really need to read it. It's only like a hundred pages. You can get it on Apple Books or Amazon Books, Kindle for like 10 bucks, uh, super cheap. Uh, they respect the channels pretty well. And a lot of times they wick out and come back in, which this one has. And we're below, that's a daily, let's see here. We're at the very bottom of this. This was an uptrend, okay? And it was an uptrend for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, twelve. three weeks, basically, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that the next candle won't open up on that channel line and move up, and then we start a new trend. You know, the trend continues up and we go. Uh, or we could stay in this semi going up. Instead of this uptrend like this, we're at more, a little bit more of a, a slower uptrend. So we could still come down and still go up, but we would still be in an uptrend and just be in a, a shorter angled one. Um, than it. Price action breakdown one is the name of it. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll do a picture of it. I could probably find it right now. Where's my Apple books? It is this one right here, price action breakdown. You can see, you can barely see it on there if it'll focus in on it. Dimitri Lemire, it's a black book with white writing on it, price action breakdown. Uh, if you type it into Google, you'll find it. So anyhow, so we're gonna do this. We frame this chart on, uh, on a daily, okay? So we did long-term, this is a longer-term daily. And this is current trend daily, okay? Now we go down to a four hour chart. I don't really see much of a difference of, it's not really worth, uh, not worth my time to draw another channel on there because the four hour is respecting. Uh, if you're on a futures contract, because you have overnight sessions, so then you have more candles in there, this one doesn't, you just have, five days for the week and that's it. Um, so on this, I'm not gonna draw anything on four. Now we're gonna go down to an hour, all right? So this whole, let's, on, the nice thing about trading views, you can just zoom out and zoom in and it'll make your higher time frame channel show up. So we're on a one hour time frame, and now we can click on roller coaster and look for opportunities that are in here. And look how many have popped up inside of here. Uh, this one popped off right at the channel line, center channel line took off. 
if you guys watch me a lot on Wednesdays, um, I, I don't like messing around with the center channel line unless I have a roller coaster move that says go and look at this. This roller coaster move said go short. It went way short. It went all the way to the bottom of the channel. This roller coaster move came at the channel line. Now, see these ones here? There was no signal. I wouldn't have taken any of those because I just get chopped up on the center channel line. But what roller coaster does to help me decide if I want to take a trade or not is if it pops off an alert and it starts going off that center channel line, then I trust it uh, taking the move that I wouldn't normally. So this one had one, two, three, four, five. Every one of those was positive moves, uh, very positive moves. Um, this one came off six, took you all the way down to the bottom channel line, and then you didn't have any alerts on a one hour. Popped off another one on that current trend going up. It popped it off right on the center channel line. Came up, retested the center channel line for the uh, more horizontal, um, kind of just slightly uh, trend. And then it went all the way to the top of the channel. And then what did it do? It came all the way back to the bottom. And guess where it stopped right here? The center channel line. So if you don't have your long-term channels on here, you won't see like, hey, we're going to come into some support and resistance right now. I probably want to tighten my stop loss up. Uh, or if you bust out of something like that, it's probably going to take off and go to the top of the channel so you don't get out too early on it. This one popped off here, center channel line again, and now the next one, I don't know, five candles later, it popped down, let's see, 103.63, 102, so it went about a dollar, dollar less on that one, trying to stop everyone out, and then took off to the moon uh, from there. Now, right now, we have a, okay, so when we talk about roller coaster being in the groove, you look at the time frame. I personally do not like to take 60 minute roller coaster moves because a lot of crap can happen in 60 minutes in the world. But that being said, if I go backwards here and look, one, two, three, four, five, six, this one printed one, but it never activated. So seven, eight, it's been 100% accurate on all eight times previous and very nice moves, not some little, you know, penalty handling move. Uh, this one was the smallest one of all of them and it was still a really good move. Um, this was a monstrous move. Well, we have another alert right now. If you zoom in here, you can see we alerted on June, uh, are at 1530 and then we are over here at 2130 it's popped out of there for another alert going down so keep your eye on that let's go down to a 15 minute and guys on your time frames over here on the left if you just touch one of these stars it will then show up over here if you uncheck it it disappears I like a 15 minute, I gotta remember to change these so I don't mess up Paul's setup. So let's go to 15 minutes. Scroll back on there and then now look at the opportunities on JP on a 15 minute. Pretty good opportunities there. Not as many that were on um, the one hour. There was actually, it was more accurate on the one hour. Okay. This one on five minutes has been pretty darn good too on five minutes. You pick this move off here down a little bit, then turn around reverse, gave you another two back to back. Um, let me zoom in here so you can see it. Gave you back-to-back -back moves right here. Gave you another one out of here. Came back and then a massive move all the way down. Almost to the bottom channel line, which it pulled back up and then ended up coming back out of there. On it, massive move right off the bottom channel line. I mean, this is a, I mean, look at the entry. It is the channel line that's right on there. If you didn't have, let me, Turn this off. 
this daily channel. If you didn't have that channel line on there, how in the hell would you know that that was a good place to go long? Like, you know, it's going to pop up one of these orange boxes and it says to go long right there. How would you know that that is a really highly probable area that you should go? That if you didn't have your channel on there, you would put the channel line on and you're like, oh, hell yeah, we've been respecting this channel for a long time. Look at it. We're at the bottom of the channel line and we got back inside of it and we got a roller coaster move that says go long. Night was that 98.85 and went to 104. That's a big, big, big move. Same way with this one here. Look at it. It's popped off five minute moves off those bottom channel lines. This one took you to the bottom. On it. And then now let's go on 15 minutes. Go to five minutes. And then let's isolate that is 113. I want to take the move down of 113. So let me see where you guys can see this a little bit better. should go from the previous day, which that should be 8, 1530. We're going to go from right here, which is going to be candle 110.99. So let's turn on Elliott Wave. We're going to go to inputs, 110. And how we got that again, guys, is I just hovered underneath the where we gapped down and opened right there. So I'm going off that opening candle right there. It's, and if you look over here on the, your W5T bias, that blue, those blue numbers are the candle number. I'm going to go on there. It's 110. I hit Elliott Wave, hit the little sprocket, punch in 110. It's set at default as one, which will start from candle number one. Uh, well, I mean, Trevor, you tell me just looking at it. Does JP Morgan look like it bounces off the lower channel line? Yes. It's done it. One, two. Now this third time it's gone farther. It's gone farther below that channel line than it ever has before. Uh, on there. So. I don't know that uh, now that's only a five minute on the higher time frame. We're here at the top of the big channel. So on it, but let's go now. I'm going to, I'd like to isolate because we did one on five minutes. Let's do 15 real quick. I'm going to take the top of that one. This little box right here, you can make this uh, window bigger without deleting your W5T stuff down below. So let's go right here. That is candle 113. 113 is not going to change much from 110. Trying to find a fifth wave move in here is what I'm trying to find so we can grade it. Typically, this actually looks like maybe a one, one, two, this is a three. So one. I'm going to isolate off 11. Yeah, that's not. I'm not going to change anything on that one. Let's go down to two minutes, see if we can find something on it. I'm going to go on this high point over here. It's still 111. Well, these candles don't change much on this. 
Yeah, it's not going to change much on that. So JP is not a good one that uh, on finding. And there's I don't have a fifth wave move on JP, but you go over here on 15 minutes with your channels, and you have there was an Elliott wave in the past, but right now we just don't have one. But with these channels, you can take advantage of using roller coaster off these. Um, you can also turn on bits, take advantage of these moves when they go, because a lot of times, like right here, your cyan line crossed over right at the channel line, okay? Before roller coaster gave you the signal up here. So bits actually got you in. If you look right here, let's see, let's make this bigger. Here's your cyan line right here. We go down, come back up and it crosses over the center channel line. When it crosses over that yellow, that is a good indication to go long. You also, if you look over here, your bias dots, which are higher time frame, is short, 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 boom, green go long. So now you, you're grading the trade on bias, cyan crossed over the yellow, go long. Plus you went over uh, the midpoint of the previous close. This was, um, the low was over here. We went over the midpoint and you're over the point of control dots. It's kind of hard to see on here. I like to uh, make these smaller so that they're easier to see, but these purple dots are your point of controls. So we were above the point of control, above uh, cyan cross, okay, above point of control, one reason to go long. Cyan crossed over the yellow, two reasons to go long. Six, four moving average from your Elliott wave software we're above the blue, the top one, three reasons to go long. We're above the bottom channel line, four reasons to go long. Bias goes from red to green, wallet cross over there, five reasons to go long. Oscillator down here, now we're not doing uh, a fourth wave pullback, but look at your oscillator, look at how the red bars are getting shorter shorter, shorter on that one, and then really short when it jumped up, when it gapped up and opened up there. So there's six reasons to go long. Then you got your uh, 535 oscillator. If I don't hover my mouse over there, you can see at the very bottom of the screen, you can see that arrow that it crossed over the 20 on the 535. So now you have seven, was that seven or eight reasons to go long? I didn't have one reason not to take that trade. Not one. Let me look at volume real quick too. Now add your volume on there and look at this. We got lower, lower, and then boom, explosive, explosive. So there's eight reasons to go. Yes, Trevor, when did you, uh, right here, bits crossed over right here there was your now you're looking for i know what you're talking about on the signals going there we're on a 15 minute let's go to a five and see if we can find those All right, we've got, I'm looking on here. I think this is Paul's uh, trading view guys. Uh, so we can keep our videos in one place and uh, instead of me doing them here and doing them over here and we're trying to put them together. So let's see. Yes. All right. So on, let me scroll back so I can try to get 
our channel line. Okay, now we scroll back. And if you, they're, they're actually in here. I like taking these, I'm just gonna tell you on these, let's just take these, this is what I do with them. I take my labels off so that it's easier to see on here. But you have your open, mid, close, um, all of those. But here are here's a bit signal to go short. It didn't hit. It touched it, went back off. Had a potential one, never touched it, came back off. Now this one, we're getting close to touching one and for a short going down. Now, normally, I wouldn't take that because we've had two before that it didn't take to go down, but look at how far we've gone down. We've went from one side of the channel to the other and we violated it and going way down compared to any of the other times before. We just haven't dropped outside of that channel as much as we've dropped out of this one. Doesn't mean it may not pull back, um, but look at the 6.4 moving average on here too. We came down, it almost always retests it again. When it comes out, it always comes back up, touches it and goes down. This one came through, almost touched the blue, came back down. I, the, currently right now on this five minute, uh, I don't know about it. That uh, it should go down, but you're in uncharted territory on this one. All right, give me another signal to look at, guys, another futures. Let me do Russell. I'm just going to pick it whether you like it or not. Too bad, so sad. <laughs> but, uh, all right, let's go to daily. And we're going to go up. And when it does that, you can just click this reset button. It takes you right back to where you need to be. I'm going to turn the volume off because I don't like the way it looks on there. We're going to hit the regression channel, hit our drop down. And you remember last week we showed you how we saved it as JW's daily channel. I'm just going to click the low, which is this one right here. I'm going to click the bottom of that one. doesn't matter if you click above or below on that. It's good. The computer's going to redo it for you. Uh, I am, I'm going to click actually to the top of this. I'm going to drop it. And that is a daily channel on the RTY. I like the way it looks. That sometimes if it drops and it's kind of goofy looking uh, and I don't like it, let's just delete it. Let's draw it, draw it again. Let me drop it in a different place and see if I'll take it from here to the current candle. Didn't change anything. It, it does high low close divided by three. If you guys remember, right click the channel settings, high low close divided by three, except for the fourth wave pullback. And I use close on that one. Upper deviation, lower deviation, two and minus two. That's on there. So, all right. So, daily channels looking good. Let's go down to four hour. And the daily still looking good on the four hour. I don't see anything crazy on there. I'm going to do a 240. And we've had a nice drop and we're below on there. That's a really, really, really nice one. I'm actually going to drop this 240 from the current down to here. And I want you to see, check out how, how much those channels, how we've stayed inside there. We've respected them very, very, very well. All right, now we're gonna go down. So we have higher time frame is your blue, white. I, on my chart, I like to do them in white. Um, and I may change these next week where they're all white so you can tell them easier. But the blue, white, and blue are the daily. Red is 240. So now we're gonna go down to an hour. I'm going to zoom out, zoom back. So now we have an hour chart, but we're framed on an hour and a 240. Okay. Now we're going to go down to a 15 minute. Zoom back.
that. And then I'm going to go forwards. And this is where we're at right now. Okay. Now let me turn off Elliott Way for a second. I'm going to turn on bits. I personally, guys, if you want to change these, I'm not going to change Paul's deals. You can go in here and click thickness and then make them lighter so they don't stick out very much on the chart. And if you look here, see how bright these are and in the way, you can make them tinier. So just right click this, the. Right click the indicator, it pops up. Yesterday's high. Right now, Paul's got them on two and maxed out at 100%. You can move them down, you can make them thinner, you can make them thicker, whichever way you want. I'm gonna put them back to the way he has them, uh, just for now. But I'm gonna turn off bits and I'm gonna turn on roller coaster. This has been my go-to strategy right now. Um, I don't even isolate for a Elliott wave unless I see a nice big roller coaster move and I can eyeball it because I've done it long enough. I can look at a chart and say, Hey, we're in an Elliott wave, you know, or for me, we're in a third wave. All right. So we're on 15 minutes. So we know this is a daily top. This is a daily center channel line and we know we've gotten below it. So more than likely, hopefully we should go down here. Now, this being a third wave move means this has to be probably one. So I'm going to isolate off of the high over here. Let's go back here. There's your bar count number. I'm going to go off that high. That is bar 1523. We're going to turn on Elliott wave. And we're going to go 1523. And sure enough, look at what we got. We had a fifth wave move today. Yep, nice fifth wave move there. And look at where we are in the channel. So that 240 channel line down We've respected that very, very, very well, all right? So as soon as I start seeing a roller coaster move pop up, that usually is telling me, usually it turns into a third wave. Uh, now this one got violated because it went too high. If you look over here, it, it went above the uh, green, amber, and red box uh, and violated it, so that's why you have it's corrected itself. You had an A, seven ABC, you only had an A, and then it just went away. The wave count didn't make sense anymore. Now it's redoing it for a one, a two. I wouldn't doubt on this uh, current roller coaster move, if you look, we, the stop out is the channel line. How that lines up, I have no idea, guys. But it, uh, this probably will take off and keep on going, and it's probably going to go to the bottom down here, would be my guess of that but you're on a 15 minutes so we have Elliott wave on there let's go to five minutes and let's see what opportunities we have on five minutes now actually you know what let me go back to 15. <clears throat> this fourth wave on a 15 minute, this fourth wave pullback was not big enough to draw a channel on it to take it. So we're gonna skip that one. Let's go to a five. All right. Man, these are just quick moves. I mean, they're like one candle, one candle wonders um, when they move on here. All right, right now, currently, 
we're going to draw a channel on here for, I haven't done the uh, wave four pullback. So let's just do a 240 and then I'm going to adjust it. You're going to drop it at the, the high or the, which this would be the low of wave three. You know, touch it and you go to the wave four pullback and then right click that for settings. You're going to go down here and change this to close. And then we're also going to change the color. I like having them gray. Why? I have no idea. I just do. I like the center line dotted. And then we're going to save this template, save as. Wave 5 t wave 4 pullback. All right, pull back. All right, that is saved as a default. Okay, so now we have this wave four pullback. Now I'm gonna scroll back. Uh, I can't get the daily channel line to pop up, but we have this 240. You can see here that we're in. All right, the wave four pullback didn't quite get there to that center or the bottom of that channel line. Fifth wave targets down here. So you're not gonna take this move until you get outside of that channel, which this candle right here did. Okay, so before we take this, you wanna be below the 6.4 moving average. So you're, even though we were outside of this channel, we're not gonna take that yet. You shouldn't. That, uh, And you can see here, we did get a red bias dot from yellow for the pullback. Okay, that was a positive. But look at your 535 oscillator. It's getting less and less and less on all these. Even though we're going down, it's getting less and less. Now this one is starting to get more. You did get a crossover arrow right here on stochastic, which is good. Okay, we are on the other side of the 6.4 moving average. Okay, but if you notice, it's gone up and it's climbing up. I don't like the way that looks like that. Um, I would wanna see, my mouse would cooperate with me. I would wanna see this, another candle open up below, like over in here before I'd wanna take it. The only thing though, is your fifth wave target is barely right there. So right now, I probably would not take this. And if we do a Fibonacci, Fib retracement, let's see, go from the green. Look at that here. Hold on, I did that wrong. Fib, and go from, entry line from there. I've got to redo this on here. Well, you've got a little bit, I don't know. It's not an, it's not enough of a move for me to want to take it. I'm not feeling like my, my good vibes inside. You have a bias dot that says go. You're below the 6.4 moving average, but you don't have, let's turn on your volume real quick. Look at the volume. This is why I don't trade at night. There's no volume. So it's giving you conflicting signals and that's where you get chopped up. That's why I just, I don't trade at night usually. Unless a rocket goes off on the other side of the world, you know, and then you can make some money. Usually the markets will go down for a little bit and you can make some quick money on those. But other than that, I don't trade at night. It's just, and look at this. Bias said short, this said short, that said short. We're below the 6.4. Everything said you're supposed to go short, but look where the candle's going. Now, it's probably going to retest it and then turn around and come down. But I just wouldn't take that trade right now. You, one, you don't have any volume. Um, I mean, risk to reward, yes, it is $6. I mean, that is uh, a decent amount of ticks on there. What is that? What is Russell? 10 bucks or is it five bucks? Pop five bucks. A pop on there. I don't know, man. Not not enough for me to want to take that. Um, 
let's go down to four, three minutes. Let's see if we can find, let's turn off Elliot Wave. Scroll back, find that 240. So now we know where we're at on 240. Okay, we know that's a fourth wave pullback uh, from drawing that a little bit ago. Now we do have a roller coaster move to go short right now on a three minute. So let's go back to our five minute, turn on Elliott wave, and look where we're at right now. We're below that six four moving average to go, to go short. Um, this next candle is red, but if you go to three, you're getting a signal. We're already below the six four moving average, um, but we're getting a roller coaster move to go short, which I, is a good thing. But your wave count is showing one, two, for a three to go long. So that's conflicting uh, to me on it. Let's go back to five. And then you also know with me on doing a 9140 pullback on the 535 oscillator, there's no crowning of the green in here for this fourth. There are good moves you can take on it, but my personal um, book uh, of rules is I don't take it unless it crowns green. I don't care if it's a little crown, as long as it's a crown, I'll take it. I just don't feel comfortable with this, so I wouldn't take it. No, I do not trade stocks yet, Trevor, but I am currently working on a plan to switch over to uh, stocks. I'm hoping to probably be um, probably 100% doing stocks. Uh, what is this? June, July, July, August, September, October, November. I'm going to say the first of the year. Um, but like my plan, I want I want to get out of futures and move to stocks so that I can have some mental sanity, <laughs> not being chopped up so much uh, in futures. That uh, almost everybody I know that makes a ton of money in the market is with stocks uh, on there. And the thing being is, like, say Apple comes out with bad earnings, or which is very rare, but let's say they do. And then it tanks the whole S&P when all the other companies may be doing well. But if I'm trading a stock that has nothing to do with Apple and it works just fine, you know what I mean? I can grade the trade. I can look at the channels. I can do my Elliott wave. I can do all of those things and they make sense. And the rest of the market is not going to tank it or mess it up most of the time. All right, guys, give me any bit signals on that one. Let's turn it on real quick. Bits grab this move way, way up here, way, way up here. 1484 on last night. Bits crossed over, you went past. See these purple dots? These are your point of controls. There's your point of control there. There's your point of control there. Bits crossed over right there. So we were below the 6-4 moving average, one reason to go short. Below the point of control dots, two reasons to go short. Cyan crossed over the yellow, three reasons to go short. Your volume bar went from green to red three reasons or four reasons to go, go short. Your bias went yellow, green, yellow, yellow. It did give you a red on that candle, yellow and then red. Five reasons to go short. Your 535 oscillator, if you look here, was greened up, shorter bar, shorter bar. And then on this one was almost no bar and then it started crowning down. Six reasons to go short. And then you got a signal one uh, bar before, two bars before, 10 minutes before it hit your stochastic crossover. Seven reasons to go short. No reason to not go short in that one. And yep, there wasn't a roller coaster uh, 
move on that one, but Vitz picked up seven reasons go short, zero not to take it. So that would have been a good trade. And obviously, look where we're at to right now. Now, we did come back up. If you missed that entry, you did come up and touch the 6-4 uh, moving average lines. Uh, a lot of times, it'll touch that yellow again and retest it, which it kind of did. The candles did, but the cyan didn't, and then continued down. And we just recently, it crossed back over and then back down again. So, which that also, typically, if it crosses over and then back down quickly, I don't like those. Uh, I like a retest and then keep going down. When it crosses over, it's usually something different's going on. So I wouldn't take it. Uh, Juan, the thing is, is all the, the way Paul designed these indicators is they work good. They all work together, okay? But on, say, trending day or non-trending days, you're not going to get any Elliott waves, okay? So if all you had was the Elliott wave indicator, you're not going to, let's just turn off bits and let's turn off roller coaster. And if it was a non-trending sideways, like here, uh, sideways day, you're just not getting any Elliott wave signals, okay? Now, so we turn off Elliott wave turn on roller coaster and there's a nice roller coaster move there. There's a nice roll. This one was a small one, but that was a really nice roller coaster move there. This five minute time frame. Let's go to four, three. If you notice what I'm looking, what I'm looking for is these big long roller coaster moves where it prints the trailing stop. And that is, that red line where the dark green and light green come together, that's your trailing stop. That's what I'm looking for when I keep clicking through these time frames. Let's go to two minutes. Let's see what we got there. How many of those big long green ones do we have? One, two, three, four, five. There's only about five on a two minute. Go to three minute. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, about six. So three minutes better than two. Go to a four. No, you only got one in there. Five minutes, really nice move on the five minutes. But I, I hope you guys get from this. Um, sometimes I think it's I'm boring and I'm just repeating the same thing over and over, but I've realized after talking to hundreds of people on the phone, you need it beaten into your head of going through your checklist. Yeah, it's like a pilot, which I have, I forgot Greg's in here. Uh, it's like a pilot going through his checklist. It doesn't matter if he has climbed in that exact same aircraft, the exact same plane, and he has flown it 793 times before. He's going to take out his checklist, and he's going to go through, and he's going to grade that plane to see if he's if he trusts it to fire it up and take off and fly somewhere with 165 people or 250 people on that plane, it doesn't matter if he just flew from somewhere else and the plane worked just fine. Your trading is the exact same way. You need to have a mental checklist that you run through on grading a trade, and that's why I do this every Wednesday. Oh, Juan, that is awesome. Uh, my uh, dad had a gyrocopter growing up. I can fly a helicopter. I've taken uh, many lessons in an R-22, uh, but it, it may not be the prettiest landing in the world, but I can fly a helicopter. I am good at, I'm a lot better at an airplane than I am the helicopter though. Uh, but no, you just run through this uh, and that's why I go daily time frame. Put your uh, channel on a daily time frame. Go to a 240, draw your 240 time frame, scroll back, scroll back. Now I know what's going on on the big time frame picture for daily and 240. Then you go down to one hour. Now, if you want, now look how, look how the one hour popped off this nice roller coaster move from 1498.40, and it's still going. We The cross outline, uh, 
stop out is there you have 1442 and that thing went at 1498 that uh that's uh 60 60 plus ticks that's a 300 dollars for a contract is that that's one or yeah that uh super super good and then roll down roll down to 15 minutes you know see what's in there on that one five minutes get in the habit of going through the time frames and seeing what's going on. But if you frame that chart on your daily and your 240, you're gonna make a lot better decisions because like say for instance, on your 240 here, if you got a roller coaster signal to go short right here at the bottom, you're gonna be like, uh, I don't know about this, man. You know, we're in, uh, even though we're in a trend, we've been respecting this channel if I got a, like, if you notice, roller coaster did not give you a short going uh, outside of that channel line. That's it. But, but I was going to say before I even saw a roller coaster here, but I bet you it'll give you a signal when it hit, gets back up to that channel line because that's a strong area that it's been in. So, if, and which it did, it gave you one right here which makes me, when I told you not to take the Elliott wave move, I didn't feel good about it. Look on the five minutes, it's giving you a roller coaster move to go long. When in reality, it's supposed to be a fifth wave short. So it's you just too many conflicting stories. So RTY, I wouldn't take uh, a move right now where it's at, but move around on there on your chart and find you an opportunity in there somewhere. Cause say you only have 30 minutes to trade. You sit down in front of the computer. You can't look at a daily chart and make all your decisions off that. You gotta look for something in that 30 minutes that you have to work with. And that's how you can do it. All right guys, I appreciate you all coming and hanging out with me. It's eight o'clock and it, uh, we will see you all on Wednesday. Hey, don't forget, if you saw the email that came out, Paul has got, let me put this over here. We've got a discount code right now. And I don't ever try selling you guys stuff on here. Uh, I'm just trying to save you some money that if you... Well, if I can find it. Let's look on here. Anyhow, you have the discount code on there of, I believe it's 15, well, here it is. It is 15-4-48. So it's 1-5-F-O-R-48. It's 15% off for 48 hours. Uh, if you want to buy a second set of indicators for TradingView or another platform, let me know and I'll get you a, a really good discount on those. It's usually 40%. So reach out to me um, on there. In my email, let me send it to you. It's JW at trade the JW Snell at trade the fifth.com. Uh, and if you guys are struggling at all uh, with just a little bit, uh, you need a little bit help of running through it, reach out to me. I mean, obviously, if I have, you know, 400 people emailing me, I can't uh, do a, a personal webinar every single day. But anybody on here that knows me knows that I'll spend, I've spent hours with people uh, helping them. I've gotten up at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning for people that are over in, I think somebody was in Bangkok. Uh, one time um, that uh, all over the world I've helped all kinds of people so don't feel like you're bothering me I will tell you if I can't help you that day uh, but I will make time for you I always do uh, so guys have a good night I appreciate everything we'll talk to you all next week next Wednesday seven o'clock we'll see you thanks Greg see you Juan Dale, Trevor, hey, Rochelle, see you on there too. See y'all.